God's footprint. Some saints, from the day of their birth, never ate on Fridays during Lent to observe the fast. Historians, please forgive me, but good grief. I would think that the saints before they were saints were people and would eat just as any regular person would. Others think that saints are those plaster effigies propped up on a pedestal in a darkened corner of the church. Men and women in long robes, a lost look in their eyes, an expression, I don't know, a, a bit sad. Well, I hope sculptors will forgive me, but I imagine the saints having very happy lives. Why aren't there any figures of happy saints? But most people think that being a saint has got to be pretty boring. Praying all day long with a euphoric expression, being so good, so good that in the end, you just seem silly. Faint is that? And there she was, lying on the floor. She held a letter written in her own blood. I went closer and I could read it. It said, the murderer. The murderer is you! <laughs> Stupid! Come on, John, didn't you want to hear grown-up stories? Jose Maria, dinner time. Okay, I guess that's it. Tomorrow I'll tell you the terrible story of the walking corpse. Is that one even scarier? Of course it is, sis. It's about a walking corpse! <laughs> I am yours, for you I was born. Jesus, what do you ask of me? Mom? Yes, son? What does Jesus want from me? Well, for you to love him as he loves you. But I already love him a lot. You also have to love others just as much as Jesus loves them. Oh. Come on, get to bed. It's getting very late. I don't like it. I don't want it. Oh, no. Well, you're going to eat it tomorrow. Soup I'm gonna get tomorrow. <laughs> Dear Lord, bless us and bless this food that through your graciousness we are about to receive. Amen. Dolores, how are you, my dear? Very well, thank you. Oh, my child. You're just as beautiful as ever. And how are the children? Tell me, how are the children? Jose Maria? Jose Maria, come out and say hello to our guests. No. What did you say? I feel shy. And that lady has a mustache. Tell me, how are the children? Hmm. That's very bad, son. You only have to shy away from sin. Jose Maria spent his childhood in Barbastro, a small city in Aragon, Spain. At an early age, the boy was faced with some difficult moments. Situations that his parents had taught him to handle calmly and cheerfully. Hey, Mom, how's Chon? Well, son, Chon has gone up to heaven with Jesus. But, Mom... What is it, son? Now am I gonna die? Oh, why do you say that? Because first Rosario died. Then Lolita, after that, Chon. Now it's my turn. 
Don't you worry, son. You live under the grace of the patron saint of Tori Ciudad. Remember, she saved your life when you were two years old. His father went bankrupt. An associate had played a dirty trick on him, and he wanted to pay off all his creditors before closing down the business. He was too honest a man to take off with the money and leave his debts unpaid. <laughs> laugh at us because now we're so poor. Well, money is something that comes and goes and now it's just gone. Mm. But look, sometimes God allows things to happen that we just don't understand. But he is our father and everything he gives us is for the better. Although we don't realize it, do you understand? Besides, we have a treasure that's much more important. We have a treasure? You see, we have God who is our father. We have your mother. We have Carmen. And we even still have a whole pile of money to buy roasted chestnuts. <laughs> Are you up for it? Let's go. You know what, Dad? When I'm an architect, I'll make you a really big house and you won't ever have to worry about anything. You'll see. Not long afterwards, they moved to Logroño. There, Jose Maria spent his adolescent years. His father found work as a salesman in a fabric shop. Hey, there's my dad. And wouldn't you rather study to be a lawyer? Look, Dad, I've always dreamed of being an architect. It's all right, son. It's going to be pretty expensive to study architecture, but we'll get the money you need. Your mother and I are both very proud of you. Thanks, Dad. You'll see what a great architect I'll be, and I'll be able to lend a hand at home with my earnings. However, God went to meet that young dreamer. Oh. He had other plans for him.
small flame in the young man's soul. From that moment on, he began to go to Mass every day and to pray much more often. It was the only way he could really listen to what God was whispering to him. We have a treasure? You see, we have Carmen. And we even still have a whole pile of money to buy some roasted chestnuts. <laughs> Are you up for it? see what a great architect I'll be, and I'll be able to lend a hand at home with my earnings. Lord, you know that my parents are very hopeful I'll become a great architect. But now I think that you may have other plans for me. Help me, because it's going to be very hard for them. Dad, I have something important to tell you. Lately, I've been really giving something a lot of thought, and well, finally, I've decided. I want to be a priest. Son. <sighs> hey, Dad, what's wrong? You're crying. But why? Deeply moved, my son. Have you really thought about it? I mean, it's a very important decision you're making. Being a priest is very hard. Priests have to live like saints, you know. Think about it, son. Think about it, and if that's what you want, you know that I'll support you. But, Dad, I have thought about it. I know that God is asking something of me. I don't know what it is, but... I know the best way to be available for him is by becoming a priest. Thanks a lot, Dad. I'm so happy. I wouldn't trade you for anything in the world. Jose Maria was quite aware that, being a priest, he wouldn't be able to help his family financially. So he asked God to give his parents another child. And so it was. A short time later, although his parents were old and hadn't had children in almost 10 years, little Santiago was born. Come on, say, Jose Maria. <laughs> Are you crazy? Do you expect him to be able to say such a long name? Well, then we'll do some experiments. Okay. Look, this is a doll, like you, but made of wood. Hey, look at that. He follows it with his eyes. Of course he does. Do you think he's blind? Say, my brother is a goofball. A big goofball. You do realize, Carmen, that he's not paying attention to you. Shortly thereafter, Jose Maria joined the seminary of Saragossa. There he was to carry out his studies for becoming a priest. Dear family, Saragossa is fantastic. There's a lot more going on here than in Logroño, although we don't really have much time for sightseeing. Every day I go to see the Virgin of Pilar. I'm lucky to live so close, and I pray for all of you. As far as the seminary, well, it's not exactly Cleopatra's palace, but, well, what I miss most is the water. We have one bathroom per floor, and there are a ton of us. 
But I'm doing very well. It's a matter of getting used to it. And something else. During the summer, I'll be studying law, as Dad advised me to do. I would give anything to see his face right now. Hugs and kisses to all. Jose Maria. When only 20 years old, Jose Maria was named supervisor of the seminary. He was in charge of keeping order, of taking care of the study, and accompanying the students to class. Here it comes. How'd it go with the rector? Very well. How are you two? We failed, didn't we? Failed? Failed what? What do you think, that stupid Latin class? You two were in there talking about us for an awful long time. We'll have to repeat the course, won't we? Well, no, I hope not. <sighs> what do you think I said to the rector? Well, look, guys, I'm just like you. No more, no less. I have no doubt that you also want to do things well. And you too. Am I right? And I do too. And the same goes for all of us here. We all want to be good priests. Saintly priests. Have you ever tried spicy sausage from Legrogno? Hmm? Huh? Uh. <laughs> Jose Maria gave his first mass in the Basilica of Pilar. It was a very intimate celebration. Hardly a dozen people, just relatives and friends. The greatest absence was his father's, who had passed away a few months earlier. Jose Maria had been awaiting this moment for years. He was about to touch Jesus Christ with his own hands. His pulse was racing, and it seemed as if his heart would explode. himself in his duties as a priest. All who knew him found it remarkable that this young man was so dedicated to bringing people closer to God. His father's words still echoed in his head. Jose Maria, priests have to be saints. Soon, Jose Maria moved to Madrid to begin his doctorate in civil law. His family joined him there not long afterwards. At that time, 
Madrid was filled to overflowing with immigrants from all over Spain, many of whom lived in subhuman conditions. Jose Maria was the chaplain of the patronage of the ill, a charity organization serving the poorest. Here. And now, for the big question, kids. Whoever gets this one right will get such an enormous applause that they'll hear it over in the royal palace. What is the difference between a crucifix and a tabernacle? Oh, me, 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 me. Lorenzo, it's your turn. Uh, mm, well, in the crucifix. Yes? In the crucifix, it looks like Jesus is there. But he's not. Ah. And in the tabernacle, it looks like he's not there. But he actually is. Better myself. Hour. You're supposed to be out there playing guitar at the bonfire. <laughs> Father, my time is drawing near. Paquita, could we be alone for a moment? Yes, Father. October the 2nd, 1928, Jose Maria was going through his spiritual exercises at the residence of the Paulist Fathers. Eleven years had passed since seeing those footprints in the snow. Eleven long years of hard work and prayer, of asking God for the light to understand what was asked of him. Jose Maria Escrivá de Balaguer lived in Rome. When he died on June the 26th, 1975, Opus Dei had already been made a reality on all five continents and was made up of more than 60,000 followers of 80 nationalities, thanks to his tireless efforts and a complete trust in God. His renowned saintliness more than a third of the bishops around the world to ask that he be declared a saint. A few years later, his body was transferred to Opus Dei's prelate church in Rome. On 
On October 6, 2002, Pope John Paul II declared Jose Maria a saint. But 10 years earlier, he had already raised him to the altars, proclaiming him blessed, and thus making his life an example to follow for so very many Christians who live in this world, all of whom he loved so deeply. So now tell me, do you still think the same of the saints? We live our lives as though the Lord were way out there where the stars are shining and don't even consider that he is also always by our side with a heart of flesh like yours. He loves us more than all the mothers in the world could love their children. Knowing that you love me so much, my Lord, it's almost overwhelming. Do everything you do for love. That way, there are... we shall work, and we shall work long and hard, without forgetting that our greatest weapon is prayer. That is why we must be contemplative souls in the world, trying to turn their work into prayer. Thank you.